everyone and welcome to another of my tutorials. Today I'm going to show you two techniques on how to create highlight strands in the fur using two different tools. I'm going to show you how they compare against one another, how both techniques should correctly be used, and finally when and where it is appropriate to use them. I'll be showing you at the end of the video how I have used both of these tools within my latest drawing. I've already got everything prepared. The paper I'm using is Langdon Prestige Hot Press Watercolour Paper, so please be aware that other papers may render different results. It's quite a smooth paper and very durable. This is the paper I use for all of my drawings and the paper I've found has best worked for me and the way I work. Here I have three boxes, which I prepared earlier. The first box I've put down a very light layer of pencil. So I've only built up about three layers in this area. The grain is still very prominent. There has been little to no blending or burnishing techniques used. Within the second box, I've correctly built up my layers. So I've started off by putting down my highlights first then built up my mid-tones and lastly added my shadows to create that contrast. I've applied a little bit of burnishing and blended a lot of those layers, so I've built this fur up gradually to preserve that beautiful contrast between light and dark. The final box is an interesting one uh, because I've gone down really, really dark very, very quickly. I haven't built up very many lighter layers beneath, I've simply gone in with my dark pencils and heavily placed them down. So as you can see from this image, it does look a little bit flat. So I'm going to show you how these tools do and don't work depending on the way you've approached your drawing. So tool number one is my Karen Dash Luminance White Pencil. This pencil is a great companion when working in coloured pencil. Even if you don't own any more of this brand of pencil and prefer to work with another brand, that's okay. But I would definitely consider giving the Luminance White a try when you are looking for a nice opaque white to go over those darker layers. I use Polychromos and Luminance pencils primarily within my work and I get great results when I layer uh, the white pencil onto these. So before you do anything, give that pencil a sharpen. If you are adding in little strands of white fur, you're not going to get very good results if your pencil is blunt or even moderately blunt. It needs to be super, super sharp. With my pencil, I'm going to lay down some strokes onto my first box. Just gonna press Moderately, um, you want to press fairly hard because this will be your last stage so you don't need to worry too much about applying too many more layers on top. Uh, so these are essentially going to be like your finishing touches. And as you can see, um, you can't really see very much. Um, there isn't enough pigment down on the paper. Uh, so there hasn't been enough contrast developed in those layers. So you're not going to see any obvious results. Um, when you start trying to add those highlights at this stage. Um, it's very much within the first few stages of drawing and has a very long way to go before this technique can be used correctly. Um, so the darks have been applied probably a little bit too soon and those mid-tones needed to be built up a little bit more before that went down. If your drawings are looking a little bit like the first box and the pencil is really grainy and a lot of the paper is still coming through, then it means you haven't applied enough layers in order to use this technique. So keep going, build up that pigment and that contrast. Try to spend a little longer developing those mid-tones before you start applying your shadows. So now we're going to do the exact same thing but on our second box. So remember your sharp pencil again. So now you can see a really clear difference between box number one and box two. Within this box I've built up a lot more layers. I've put my pigment down in stages from my highlights, mid-tones and then built up my layers from there to achieve these shadows. 
The white pencil applies really wonderfully over those darker shadows and mid-tones. However, you're probably still thinking that it's not as opaque as you would have expected. And that can be the harsh reality of coloured pencil. It's incredibly difficult to get that white colour of the paper back. Which is why for areas that are really bleached out, such as white spots in the eyes or bleached white fur, it's going to be really important to preserve those highlights. If you go down too dark, this technique will not bring back that crisp brightness. You'll need to avoid pushing down too much pencil from the very start in these areas. But for those subtle little stray hairs around the nose and the mouth, this technique can be perfect for adding in little finishing touches to your drawing. With this third box, I've simply skipped layers and only applied my darkest mid-tones and my shadows. So I've done um, little to no layering in this box at all. Same thing again, super sharp pencil. Because the layers are so dark, you're simply applying directly on top of those layers with the white pencil. So because of its opaque qualities, it's still going to apply quite nicely onto layers like this. So you're going to get a very obvious result the darker the layer you are applying it to. Of course, I wouldn't recommend applying your darkest tones heavily like this before you've applied any of your highlights and mid-tones. Although this technique may work for certain areas, in this case, now you have simply uh, applied strays of highlights on top of a really deep shadow and that's not very realistic. Sometimes this might work on fur below the chin, uh, so this is the case in really dense shadow underneath the neck and you may have a stray white hair falling um, over it from the mouth. Um, but in reality, you won't be able to get a realistic result if you were to apply this technique over the entire drawing in order to bring back any highlights you lost prior to this. So when you're building up your layers, try to build them like I have in box number two. Start with your light, your highlights. So map those out first. Then you can go in and map your mid-tones. And then once your mid-tones have been developed, you can then go in and add your shadows. So tool number two. You'll probably recognise this tool as many artists are using it at the moment. Here we have a slice cutting tool. It has a round ceramic edged blade and with this tool you can use it to scrape pigment from the paper. Because of the curved blade, it is potentially less damaging to the paper than other blades like scalpel blades. But you need to be incredibly precise and careful with this tool and prepare your surface in the correct way before you can achieve the result that you're after. I'm holding the knife at a slight angle and I'm going to be doing gentle upward strokes in each box. So I'm going to start with uh, box number one here. Now because I haven't applied very many layers previously and a lot of the paper is still showing, I'm basically scraping at the paper and that's a big no-no. You don't want to use this tool at this stage because you're simply going to damage the paper. So I'm going to show you the results you can achieve uh, with this tool when you have built up your layers. As you scrape away the top layer of pencil, the layers beneath reveal themselves. So all those highlights you've placed down at the start, all those soft mid-tones, any warm colours, they begin to come through beneath those shadows. It's also great for giving the impression of wispy stray fur. Just remember to do this incredibly softly and gently. If you press too hard, you will damage, cut or even tear the paper. The pencil did really well over this lay down, so let's see what happens when I use the slice tool on the third box. Now actually that's done a little bit more than I had expected. I think those uh, warmer apricot tones um, I put down have really helped. Uh, so when I first initially did this box, I placed my darkest tones down first. 
Um, I put them down really, really heavy and dug my pencil into the paper, so there was a lot of burnishing going on. Um, but I did leave the middle section free for those highlights. I built up far too much colour over the highlights, so lost a lot of that shine and contrast, which has made the fur look really dull. Um, so the slice tool has been able to lift that dark pigment and reveal some of those warmer highlights in the middle beneath. Um, but in those really, really dark areas, I'm not really getting much result. So I'm lifting a dark layer only to reveal another dark layer beneath. Now I could press down a lot harder and see if I could get the colour of the paper back. But I would essentially be scraping at the paper and damaging the surface to do this. So I wouldn't recommend that. If anyone is interested in the colours I've used for this tutorial, I will make sure to put a full list of all the materials and the colours in the description below. So how do I use them within the context of my own work? So here I have my latest drawing. I've been using my slice tool over the fur to bring out those soft highlight strands. It's great for areas such as the corner of the eye where the fur overlays fur or to define those wispy highlights over those mid-tones. Uh, so the areas beneath the eye and on the brow here. With my white pencil, I use it both to soften mid-tones and shadows to achieve a more milky blend, and particularly around the eyes, I've used it to give soft highlights under the pupil and bottom lid. I've also used it in other places, such as below the chin, uh, where you have those delicate little wispy bits of fur, and on black dogs to bring back subtle highlights, uh, especially as the white can go quite grey on really dark shades. So be aware when you are applying a white pencil over the top of, say, uh, very warm colours, so very saturated colours such as browns and pinks, that white shade will desaturate that area quite a bit. And that's it guys! Um, so I hope you've learnt some interesting tips and tricks on how to better use these two tools. Uh, for my next video I plan on focusing on how to draw different types of fur, where I will be using these two tools to help aid me in that as well. I'd love to hear uh, your suggestions for future videos, so pop those down in the comments below. And if you're interested in checking out more of my work, you can follow me on my social media pages and you can find that on my profile. Or you can visit my website at www.artistrachelcard.com.